Hello everyone, I'm Vignesh Shivakumar from Phoenix Financial Training here to share a few tips relevant to the ACCA Advanced Financial Management exam for December 2019. The exam as you might be aware is made up of three questions, one question of 50 marks, generally broken up into four or five different parts including four professional marks and two questions in section B of 25 marks each which are broken up again into few parts, normally two to three different parts. The exam is made up of an equal, roughly equal number of marks for computational and descriptive written elements. Uh, of late, uh, there has been a tendency for more written elements than numbers, but the mix still roughly remains around 50-50. The key areas that you must be thoroughly prepared on for the examination include investment appraisal which may involve basic computation of NPV or alternatively the net present value computation for a foreign project or an adjusted present value computation which is an alternative to NPV. Alongside this the examiner often tends to test candidates on their ability to understand the non-financial factors that affect decision making pertaining to a project. Now this may include ethical, environmental, social issues that need to be discussed and in some cases you are also asked for advice or solutions. You may also be asked questions related to sensitivity in the context of NPV computations you have computed or alternatively the, the NPV may be extended on to other measures like duration uh, where you are asked to do a computation and comment on the significance of your results. The other very critical and important area on AFM is valuations. While there are many different techniques of valuations, the free cash flows method the PE ratio method tend to be the most commonly tested. The examiner may not explicitly ask you to value a question but the question may be worded on the lines of what's the value created due to the combination of two companies or what is the gain to one party in an acquisition. When I say one party I mean either the acquirer or the target company shareholder and uh, this will involve or require some form of valuation of the underlying companies in the question without which it would not be possible to answer these questions. You should also expect questions on theoretical aspects related to mergers and acquisitions. Now this may include areas such as defenses against takeover, this may include regulatory issues such as uh, squeeze out rights, such as the mandatory bid condition. So you need to be aware of what these things are and how they apply into circumstance, in, in, into, into different situations. Uh, practicing sufficient exam questions is probably the best way to ensure you're thorough with these areas. Risk management is another area that is guaranteed to be tested in the exam. Uh, in the September 2019 examination, while there was a question on risk management, it was, a, it was slightly deviant from the previous questions on risk in the sense there were only five marks of computation and the remaining marks were allocated for discussion. Now this is not something normal but at the same time one should be prepared to address such questions as the theory tested there uh, was based on fundamental principles that candidates need to be aware of in the context of risk management such as how, how, how companies should manage certain risks. Uh, that said, uh, one should always consider the September 2019 exam question to be a bit of an aberration and focus on uh, what's been tested consistently over the past several years which would be a traditional interest rate or foreign exchange risk management question where one or two different methods of hedging need to be uh, computed, uh, the, the net cost, a net receipt uh, or the net interest cost or net interest income needs to be calculated 
and alongside uh, the calculation you need to be able to discuss the merits and demerits of each of these hedging techniques and then recommend the best hedging strategy. Uh, <clears throat> besides this the other key areas that you need to watch out for you must understand how real options in the context of projects are valued not just being able to do the numbers but being able to justify how valuing options using models like black scholes option pricing is useful in uh, drawing uh, upon uh, a, a, a fair evaluation or assessment of the value of a project uh, there are other technical areas such as uh, reconstruction where the questions tend to be uh, a mix of numbers and wordy elements but the, the numbers are fairly straightforward you may be asked to uh, uh, for, uh, pr produce a revised forecast of an income statement of an SOFP post a certain recon restructuring or reconstruction plan that may be given in the question but more importantly please make sure you are aware of uh, terms such as MBO, MBI, demerger, what do they mean, what are the benefits and drawbacks for uh, uh, companies uh, when they go through such processes. Uh, finally, uh, please also make sure that you are able to discuss the different uh, uh, sources of Islamic finance, how the various instruments work and how they may be used within a business context. This has remained under examine for quite some time and you might have a question on this area. While uh, the, the, the questions on this area might be fairly straightforward, uh, it, it is important that you are aware of the different terminology. Uh, and along with Islamic finance, the other traditional sources of finance may also be examined. Uh, and, and the nature of such questions tend to be uh, ones where you are given a few alternatives, you are asked to consider the factors that you need to bear in mind when you use some of these sources or uh, you may alternatively be asked to recommend a source in a given business context. Yet again that goes down uh, the lines of you pointing out the advantages, disadvantages of each of these sources of finance. Uh, please ensure that you keep practicing a lot of exam questions under time conditions. This is a very time pressured exam. We often wish for four hours to do an exam like that but you only have three hours and 15 minutes including uh, the reading, the writing, you've got to do all of that in 195 uh, minutes. So please make sure you, whatever you're practicing you do it within the exam time. So I wish you all the very best for your exam. Uh, uh, hope and pray it goes really, really well and you all come out with uh, smiling faces out of the exam hall. Thank you.